in the name of Jesus Christ, in whose name we gather, the Holy One who is in our midst, I welcome you to worship. I welcome you who are here in this West Bethany Chapel and those who are attending and listening by the WLH. My name is Miriam Book, and I have been asked to step in for our chaplain, our director of pastoral services, Ann Kaufman Weaver, who is not feeling well this morning. So let's just pause and remember Ann. Dear God, you who touch us in all parts of our life, you who are always present in our midst. Today, we thank you for Anne, Chaplain Anne. Bless her and touch her with your gentle shepherding touch this morning, we pray in your holy name, amen. So thank you for coming and thanks to Charlotte Lefebvre who is at the organ and her spouse Park Lefevre, who is at the sound, Marilyn Langeman will lead us in our hymns. And you've already met our greeters, Kitty Hershey and Darts Guckenauer. I will introduce our preacher, Jenny Gaiman, just before she preaches. So we're grateful for each other and how we team together for this time of worship. Those here in the chapel have a bulletin, and I invite you to join me in the call to worship. I will read the leader part. Uh, your part is people and the bold part that's listed. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see your presence. Open our arms to the embrace of community. Open our minds to the beauty of truth. Open our hearts to the joy of new life. I invite you to take your hymnal as Marilyn comes to lead us. Please turn to number 517, 517. Open my eyes that I may see.
Now, please turn to number 522. My Jesus, I love thee. Our offering this morning is as listed in our bulletin for Landis Homes Chapel Ministries. So the money is for honorariums for our preachers, for Christian education here at Landis Homes, for devotional guides, and multiple ministries which touch our lives. And if you are giving of your money this morning, you are invited to do so when you leave uh, there's a box, a gray box, between Chaplain Ann's office and her assistant Ann's office. Or if you choose to mail it, you just simply put it to the attention of pastoral services. And thank you. Now will you join me for prayer? Oh dear Jesus, we do yearn to love thee more because we know Thou art mine. Thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence, which is offered to each of us, which dwells within us and among us. And for the ministries of Landis Homes, please bless those, we pray, dear God, and bless each resident, those who live here now, those who have moved on to be with you, those who will come to this campus in the future. Bless our team members. Bless all those who are part of this community and bless the gifts of money which you have blessed us with. Bless them, we pray, in your holy name, amen. Marilyn will again lead us in singing. Hymn number 167, 167, For God So Loved Us.
So our next hymn, There is a Place of Quiet Rest, has been suggested by our preacher this morning. Her sermon title is Near to the Heart of God. So we invite you to keep your hymn book open. Uh, I will be reading the scripture and sections, and Marilyn will be leading us in this hymn, verse by verse. So let us continue in worship as I read from Psalm 73. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Psalm 73, verses 12 to 17. This is what the wicked are like, always free of care. They go on amassing wealth. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long, I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishments. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply till I entered the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their final destiny. Psalm 73, verses 21 to 28. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Yet I am always with you. 
you hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. Marilyn and Charlotte. And I'm so pleased and honored to just say a few words about Jenny Gaiman, who I just met for the first time, but I know her name uh, because I read about her. But Jenny will preach today about being near to the heart of God, what we've just been singing about. She speaks and writes regularly on the theme of living well in hard places. But more than writing it, she lives it. After the sudden loss of her own health in 2004, Jenny went on to found and direct Live Well, or Live Well, maybe it's pronounced, Live Well. Live Well Ministries, and she's been doing that for at least nine years. She's developed and led courses in leadership development and spiritual formation as well as organizing and facilitating numerous retreats. We're really honored to have Jenny with us. And her spouse, Don, is part of our team here as an employee at Landis Homes. Jenny, come and I will just offer a prayer, and then we look forward to hearing you. Dear God, thank you for creating Jenny, for the gifts that you have poured into her life, for the words that you have given to her to share with us today. Please give her your spirit's freedom and give us each ears to hear and hearts that are open. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, Landis Holmes has become quite the uh, family place for us. Not only does Dan work here in facilities, but now our son Ryan works here uh, leading some of the group exercise classes. So some of you might be subject to him working you out and listening to his jokes because <laughs> I know he starts his classes with those. Oh, as for me, it is good to be near God. The psalmist said in the scripture that Mim just read for us, the nearness of God is my good, he said. Their good, their good is wealth. Their good is health. I don't have those things, the psalmist was, was crying out, was bemoaning, but the nearness of God is my good. Good morning, friends and saints at Landis Homes. 
It is good to be near you this morning. Good to be together with you and with God. Would you join me as pray, in, would you join me in prayer as we enter in together? God who draws near, come close to us now. You who we are always with, be with us here. Take us by the hand. Remind us of the best goodness there is, the goodness that you are an incarnational God, a God who comes near and who dwells with us here. We bless you and we ask the blessing of your nearness upon us. Amen. I have a room in my home that my husband built for me that my family affectionately calls the SS Jenny, as if it was a ship that we were sending off. It's a storage closet that Dan changed into a prayer closet for me. And the S's in SS Jenny stand for sacred space. Or you could say they stand for sane space or sheltered space, secret, sweet, or solitary space. You get the idea. It's where I go to meet with God. And on Ash Wednesday, several months ago, as we entered into the season of Lent, while my forehead had not yet been marked with ashes, my body was marked with the fragility of life. As I spent four hours that day in the emergency room with the doctor ruling out what he called all the bad stuff. The following morning after spending Ash Wednesday in the emergency room, I entered my sacred space room and the presence of God was thick. It was palpable. As I sat down in it, the tears began to spill from my eyes. I wasn't feeling very strong, firm, and steadfast, as the Apostle Peter describes in one of his letters to the church, but rather quite tired, tender, and teary. And in this state, in this state, I was met with the nearness of God. God right there. And there's honestly nothing that compares with such a gift, which is what the psalmist eventually discovered in the psalm that was read this morning. Sometimes in the scriptures, people cry out, asking why God is so far removed from them. And other times we're told that God's presence was so thick, so filled a room that all the people could do was cry glory. In Psalm 73, which Mim read for us, the psalmist Asaph is lamenting. Compared to others, he says, his life is hard. Others are prospering in health and wealth, while quote, all day long he's being afflicted, and he is none too happy about it. But then Asaph entered his own sacred space, (laughs) S.S. Asaph. He entered the temple of God, and he found God to be near. I am always with you, Asaph realized when he stepped into God's presence, and you are all I want. And then Asaph concluded his psalm by saying, as for me, it is, near, it is good to be near God. The nearness of God is my good. The nearness of God is our good. Yes, Asaph, yes and amen. The nearness of God is our good, even in the midst of the hard and the heavy, the bad and the broken. There is nothing quite like the nearness of God. 
this morning as we sang the hymn, Near to the Heart of God. I, um, as this hymn came to mind, I looked up the story of it because I did not know the story behind how this hymn was written. Is anybody familiar with the story of this hymn? Okay, well, would you like to be? This hymn was born out of tragic circumstances, as many hymns were. Cleland McAfee, the hymn's author, suffered the loss of his two infant nieces to diphtheria in 1903. At the time, McAfee was the preacher and the choir director of the Campus Presbyterian Church in, at Parkville College in Missouri. And his daughter described the account of his writing of this hymn in her book titled Near to the Heart of God. And this is what she said. She said, the family and the town were stricken with grief. My father often told us how he sat long and late thinking of what could be said in word and in song on the coming Sunday after the death of his brother's children. So he wrote this little song. The choir learned it at their regular Saturday night rehearsal. And after learning it that Saturday night, they went to Howard McAfee's home, the home of the author's brother, whose children, babies, had just died. The choir went to his home, and they sang this new song as they stood under the sky outside the darkened, quarantined home. And they sang, there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of God. As David, another psalmist, penned, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. We may live near, up close and personal to the fragility of life. It sure does feel that way right now, doesn't it? We may be tired, tender, and teary, but in that very place, we are also near and very dear to the heart of God and to the sweet companionship of Christ, the suffering servant. God's presence is often brought near to us by the presence of others. That church community that walked to the grieving home and stood outside in the dark and sang to them. I remember a time when someone in our former church, a man in his early 40s with two young boys at home, was battling cancer, and he was in his last days on earth. When a group of us from the church traveled to his home, and we stood on the family's front yard and we sang. We sang and we prayed and the nearness of God dwelt among us. It was one of the moments that I enjoyed the most being a part of a church body. The nearness of God is our good, even and especially when we are in the presence of the bad and the breaking apart. I am always with you, the psalmist Asaph said to God. You have taken hold of my right hand. You hold my hand, the psalmist said about God. I find it so reassuring to imagine God holding my hand. Holding my hand through every step of the day, it makes a difference someone holding our hand. Their nearness is our good. When I'm scared and someone comes and gently takes my hand, it seems to speak to me, do not fear, I am near. I am here and I am near and you do not have to face this thing alone. It 
Isn't this the message throughout all of our scriptures? Isn't this what God is always saying? Close to a dozen years ago now, my mom and I were visiting my younger sister, Christy, in Seattle, Washington. At the time, I was in the midst of a rather excruciating year, and the three of us were on our way to tour some peaceful Japanese gardens. I received a troubling phone call just as we turned into the parking lot of these gardens. Mom and Christy were sitting in the front seats of her van, and I was clear in the back by myself because the middle row was taken up with child's car seats. And this phone call ended with me in tears. My sister pulled into the parking space, stopped the car, and didn't even bother getting out and coming around. She began climbing over the seats to reach me in the back, to be by my side. And that's when she said it. She sat down right next to me and she said, I will not let you face this thing alone. She could not fix what was happening. She could not wish it away or pray it away, but she could enter it, and she did. Sitting there next to me, holding my hand as I wept. I don't think I'll ever forget the moment of her breaking into my world and my pain in such a simple and profound way, just to be with me, just to be near me. God is a lot like my sister, and his nearness is our good. As author Veronica Roth said, sometimes the best way to help someone is just to be near them. I'm going to end our time today with a prayer of blessing written by Jan Richardson. But before I do, I'd like to invite us into a little imaginative prayer exercise. If you're comfortable doing so, I invite you to close your eyes during this time. And as we do, I would like you to imagine two different scenes that I've talked about today. First, imagine Jesus and maybe a few others coming to where you are, coming to your home in your own dark night and singing a song to you. Watch them as they come. Recognize who is there. And listen. What song is it that they are singing to you and over you? Sit for a moment in their presence and listen to the song. And now perhaps you find yourself like me in the back seat of the van, sitting alone with troubling news. Can you picture Jesus crawling over the seats or over any and all obstacles that exist to reach you? Taking your hand so you don't face it alone. Spend just a moment in silence, inviting 
allowing and experiencing God's nearness and God's coming to you. And now receive this prayer titled, Will You Meet Us? by Jan Richardson. Will you meet us in the ashes? Will you meet us in the ache and show your face within our sorrow and offer us your word of grace? That you are life within the dying that you abide within the dust, that you are what survives the burning, that you arise to make us new. And in our aching, you are breathing. And in our weeping, you are here. Within the hands that bear your blessing, enfolding us, within your love. Amen. There is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee near to the heart of God. Amen. Thank you, Jenny. Please join me in singing hymn number 599. 599, he leadeth me.
Our final hymn is God Be With You, number 430, 430. We are truly grateful, Jenny, for your sermon, your words to us. In the congregation where I regularly worship, we have a phrase that we sometimes say, thanks be to God. Will you join me in saying those words? Thanks be to God for your ministry, for each person who has been part of our team leading this morning, we are grateful, and for each of you who have set aside this time of gathering for worship. Following the benediction, Charlotte will play one more hymn, and then after the hymn, you are welcome to leave, and you may greet uh, Jenny in the back of, of our chapel. Receive these words from the prophet Zephaniah. The Lord your God is in your midst. God rejoices over you with gladness. God exalts over you with loud singing. God will renew you in God's love. Amen. <laughs> 